Win for you. Miss, I guess that's Miss Henning. Nice. Living on a prayer. Absolutely. Bon Jovi's always good. Because half the time I feel like I'm loving on a prayer. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to Quince Orchard High School. I am Beth Thomas, a proud principal, and I'm excited to welcome you. Uh, it's kind of weird because we've not, um, you know, we've gone back and forth with in-person meetings as well as virtual meetings. So this is a virtual webinar. And for those of you who have not participated in a webinar, this is going to be recorded and posted uh, for all those uh, fans we have out there who would like to see information about Quince Orchard registration and articulation. So information will be posted uh, tomorrow, along with any questions that you may ask. We actually do our best to answer questions throughout, throughout the evening, and we'll post a uh, FAQ uh, with a slide so our community can can see. We know six o'clock sometimes can be an interesting evening hour. And I uh, just want to be transparent that I am stepping away at 7 p.m. Uh, to go to the city of Gaithersburg. Uh, city of Gaithersburg is recognizing our state championship football team this evening at their board meeting. So probably a little bit between 645, 7 at the latest, so I can get over there. Uh, I would like to take a moment to introduce the uh, team that's here with you this evening, who will help guide our presentation and share important inf information. So I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Lee, and we will go from there. Hi, my name is Edith Lee. I'm the 12th grade administrator, one of the assistant principals at Quince Orchard High School. I'm going to uh, introduce Douglas Rivera. Hi, everyone. I'm Douglas Rivera. I'm the resource counselor at Quince Orchard. I'll pass it on to Ms. Jimenez. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nancy Jimenez. I am one of the counselors at Quince Orchard as well. And I am Colleen uh, Adams. I'm the resource teacher for the Fine Arts and Career Technology Education Department and the coordinator for the AP and Advanced Studies Signature Program. Okay, Ms. Should I start the screen share? Yes, please, if you would. Okay. All right, so the slideshow. Can you see the slideshow now? Absolutely. So we'll jump right into our agenda for this evening. Okay, Ms. Thomas, if you uh, do run the first slides, I'll move the slides forward. Yeah, if you can go ahead into the next slide. All right, so uh, we've gone over our welcome and introductions. So uh, this evening we'll go through our counselor assignments, submit names and faces, many of you probably already know. Uh, graduation requirements, they are different per grade level on this um, uh, webinar this evening. The registration process, uh, information for you to keep in mind, as well as our AP Advanced Signature Program and questions. And I do want to highlight the three pictures that you see here. Uh, one is our, our state championship band, and the second is our state semifinalist uh, girls soccer team, and the last is our state championship football team. So bottom line, our goal is to ensure that uh, our students are connected. And while this may not represent all of the things that we have to offer here at Quince Orchard, we truly hope that your students are feeling connected, welcomed, celebrated, and recognized. Next slide, Ms. Lee. So our vision and mission is really to, uh, as I shared before, to create the conditions where all students uh, feel celebrated, welcomed, and recognize that all students experience excellence and that our students are able to leave Quince Orchard with everything that they need to lead per their, to be successful and lead um, successful uh, personal and professional lives. And this year, our specific focus is called shining the light. So our goal is to shine a, a light on what is going well and what needs to be improved as we create an anti-racist, anti-biased community 
And some of the key phrases that you'll see here um, are really what uh, embodies the essence of what we're trying to do in terms of having uh, high expectations, enlisting the um, uh, mindset around restorative justice, sharing uh, our unconditional positive regard for each other, being a warm demander, and as I shared, being anti-racist, creating a student and staff community where students feel welcome, celebrated, and uh, valued. So I am going to uh, go to the next slide. Uh, on this screen, you'll see all of our counseling team. It is really, really important that as we're navigating the registration and articulation process, that students know, and uh, they're going to be meeting with their counselors, and we're going to go over some key dates with you uh, throughout the presentation this evening. But that connection with our, our counseling team is huge. Uh, I will tell you that I, and maybe I'm a little partial, but I do believe we have one of the best counseling teams um, in Montgomery County, if not the state, and um, they will do whatever they need to do to support your students. So please make sure that you um, encourage your child as they're registering, whether it begin, it's beginning uh, later this week, next week, or into January, that they have that connection with their counselor. So this is here as a reference for you to go back to. Next slide. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Rivera. Actually, this is um, my slide that I was going to go over. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry, Ms. Jimenez. Take it away. Totally fine. I'm good. I'm good with that. Um, again, uh, my name is Nancy Jimenez. I'm one of the counselors, and I want to go over uh, the graduation requirements. So what you'll see here is uh, the number of credits everyone needs as your minimum in order to graduate. In order to receive a credit, you need to pass a class. Um, each semester is equivalent to half a credit. So as you can see here as an example, English, you need a minimum of four English credits in order to graduate. And of course, my dog has to bark right now, right? <laughs> Always the way. Um, so you need four credits in order to graduate. So by passing the first semester, the second semester of your ninth grade year, you would have received one full credit in English. So because you need four credits, that means you're taking English all four years you are in high school. Social studies, you only need three credits, but those three credits are dictated to you. One of those credits has to be in a US history, Another one has to be in national, state, and local government. And then the last one has to be in modern world history. So those are your three. In science, you also need three. And one has to be in biology. And the other two have to be designated as an NGSS aligned class. So those for us are chemistry, either an honors chemistry or regular chemistry, physics, or and or any AP science class that we have. All of those uh, count as the other two. So you need the biology and then two more. For math, math is a little bit different. You need four credits in math. Many of our students take a math credit or two in middle school. And that's beautiful, that will count towards one of their four that they need for graduation, but the state also stipulates that every student needs to be in math all four years they're in high school. So those students that have received a math credit in middle school would, would be graduating essentially with more than four math credits, and that happens for a lot of students. Math also has some requirements that one credit must be, one of the four must be in algebra, one of them must be in geometry, and then another two. Now for PE, everyone needs one full credit in PE, so that's a full year of PE. This is where the requirements have changed with health. For our rising 12th graders, the graduation requirement is a half year of health, half of a credit. For all our other students in the building, um, the, the requirement has changed and it is now a full credit. And we're gonna talk a little bit further about what that looks like um, in further slides. Right now, I'm just going through the requirements. 
everyone needs one full requirement in art and everyone needs one full credit, sorry, one full credit in technology. Technology, there are uh, only four options uh, that students can take uh, to count as a technology credit. We have many technology classes, but these four are the only ones that count towards graduation uh, technology credit. And that is foundations of technology, foundations of computer science, AP computer science, or intro to engineering design, which is the first uh, class for um, Project Lead the Way. And I know that's a lot of information, but I wanted to pause here and see if there were any questions that needed to be answered from the Q&A or anything, or we're good to keep going. There are no questions at this time, Ms. Jimenez. All right, so then I will keep, keep it rolling. Next slide, please. Okay. So more graduation requirements. So those were the credits that you need in order to graduate in the specific areas. There are some other requirements that students need to graduate. One is called a program completer. Majority of our students do decide to do two years of a world language plus elective credits. So here at QO, we have American Sign Language, we have Chinese, French, Latin, Spanish, and Spanish for Spanish speakers. But that's not the only program completer. Some students' language just is not for them, and we have other options for them. Uh, we have a career completer program, and you could see those there like child development, Cisco system. These are programs that we have here. Um, there's also programs at Edison, Gaithersburg, and Seneca, things like plumbing, cosmetology, um, cybersecurity, things of that nature are um, also options for students. And then at QO, we also have a site-based uh, program called uh, Career Development Program, where students are researching and looking into colleges and looking into different careers. And in their senior year, they must hold a job as part of that graduation requirement. So like I said, majority of students do decide to do a world language, but not everyone. The, there are other programs for that. And I'm gonna give a little caveat on the next slide, please. So starting with the class of 2025, so our current 10th graders, um, all students that have their program completer be a world language, the state said that it needs to be the same language. So for our 11th and 12th graders, a student might decide to do one year of French and one year of Spanish, and that would count as two years or two credits of uh, world language. For our current ninth and 10th graders and students coming up through the ranks, it needs to be the same language. So it needs to be two years of uh, Spanish or French, or Chinese, Latin, whatever their language is. So that is a, a, a change in the graduation requirements. Any questions? Should I stop for questions? We're answering questions in the Q&A, so now we can keep going. Okay, I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure there wasn't, you know, many people asking the same question. So continuing on with graduation requirements, there are lots, um, but that's our job as counselors. We, we work really hard to make sure that our students are all on track for graduation. We're constantly having meetings and talking with them. Um, but to continue on, students must earn a minimum of 22 credits, but most students receive 28 or more, especially if they're receiving credits in middle school. Students need 75 student service learning hours. Those are community service hours, SSL hours, you may have heard. And they started those as soon as they graduated their fifth grade year. And then also, Right now, we know that students need to pass the Maryland State Assessments. Um, with COVID and things uh, in the past years, the state decides whether those things are waived in terms of passing them. As of right now, what we know is that students need to pass them. So make sure you're encouraging your students when they do take their test to work the best they can to pass. Next slide. Okay. So like I said, we were going to talk about health, starting with the uh, 10th grade class 
So the class of 2025. Students need a full so our rising juniors, our current second half of health, and are rising registering for health A, the first part of health. So majority of our current 10th graders are currently in health A, and next year in this registration process, they'll register for health B, and our current um, ninth graders will take health for the first time next year. Um, if, you're, if students are interested, they can take health over the summer. Um, QL will be offering, from what I understand, we're planning on offering health A, and the county, from what I understand, is planning on offering both A and B. Um, the county also recommends that students should be taking the two programs separately. So taking it all in one year is not recommended by the county. So students are able to register for health A and B um, in the county, but we will not be offering health B in the summer. We meaning QL will be doing health A. Next slide. Okay, so to help our students understand a little bit more what needs to go on the opposite of health, because you're taking health is only for one semester, what you can take for um, the other uh, opposite that. So students can take um, a PE and we've had some PE options there, specialized PE, soccer, yoga, various ones. Um, also in the uh, fine arts and technology, um, we have many options there as well. You can see so, uh, photography, music technology, piano, there's many that can be taken there as well. There are some options in the English department, some options in social studies, and also some options in science. But this is a quick little cheat sheet for students to check out what they can take in um, with health. Any questions I need to answer or anything? All the uh, questions have been answered in the Q&A. And again, the Q&A will be shared at the end of the meeting with all parents. All the all questions right. will be shared. Sounds good. So one of the questions that I want to highlight real quick um, is, uh, so we know that students do, they do earn uh, credits in middle school. They do earn high school credits in middle school. Um, and the question that we always get is, will that high, will that middle school, will that class taken in middle school, will that count towards graduation? So yeah, um, if a student has taken, you know, and we'll talk more about it later on, but if a student has taken like algebra one, uh, geometry, Spanish one and two, uh, French one and two, like those kind of classes, if they're taking those at the middle school level, they will earn college, uh, they will earn credit towards graduation for high school. But the one thing that to be mindful are is that there are um, an increasing amount of, of colleges out there that don't honor middle school credits. So while they will meet the graduation credit for MCPS, um, colleges out there will say, you know, it's great that you took that class in middle school, but that doesn't count towards our admission requirements. So just keep that in mind when uh, when you're when you're thinking about those classes. Uh, when it comes to MC Jumpstart to college, so our current uh, sophomores, juniors, and seniors are eligible to take classes at MC. Um, this is formerly known as dual enrollment. A lot of um, a lot of y'all may know it in that way. Um, students can start earning college credits while they're in high school. So the way that works is that the student takes four classes at QO in the morning, and then in the afternoon they can take classes at Montgomery College. Um, classes can be in person or in virtual. There are, um, you know, when students are registering and signing up for these courses, um, they will select the class that they want to take, and it can be taken in any campus. So a student can, can if they wanted to go to the class at Tacoma Park, they can go to Tacoma Park, they can go to Rockville, or they can go to Germantown. It's all, it's all up to y'all. Um, we will have an information session um, in, in early spring to discuss the, the application procedures um, and sort of what, what is required of a student in order to, to start their process to, for MC Jumpstart to College. Um, on our counseling website, we also have a dual enrollment page. Uh, Ms. Hernandez is our dual enrollment specialist. Um, she's great. And if you have any questions, you can follow the email that I have on, on the page there. Um, and she's also live on our Twitter page as well. She's constantly posting up, you know, updates and, and um, fun videos. So for, for any, any one of y'all who have questions about is dual enrollment right for me, or should I take, should I be taking dual enrollment versus um, AP classes? 
Uh, she's created numerous videos on there that helps answer those, those questions. So definitely check her out. <clears throat> Internships. So for our rising seniors, um, we know that you know some some of our students would like to start jumping into sort of like what does that what does that job look like? So I want to become a veterinarian. So can I can I go off and, and find um, an internship to veterinarian, um, early childhood development, and those type type of programs? If you are interested in doing an internship, please reach out to Miss Lisa's side. Um, there's the remind uh, code in there, and it's also on Twitter as well. If you're uh, if you want to learn more about what kind of internships options are available to you, all again, send her an email. We do ask, um, and this goes back to our Jumpstart to College as well. We do ask that you'll still register for a full year of courses, so you'll still have to register for seven classes. But once you get approved for that internship, or once you get approved for that dual enrollment course, um, at that point we will um, reduce it down to that four uh, classes. Uh, even with internship, students do take four classes in the morning and then they do their internship in the afternoon. And again, just as I mentioned before, uh, be mindful that while internship does look good, um, there are some colleges out there that, that would prefer that students take uh, a full year of courses, you know, a full seven workload of courses, um, and they don't really care for internships. So just keep that in mind when you're when you're looking for classes. All right, says my internet's unstable. Am I okay now? I apologize. All right, four year plan. So um, through Cougars Connect this past week, we um, sent out to students. Um, we talked about you know course registration and we also gave them a four year, we handed out a four year plan to all of our students. So please keep, uh, if, you, if you have a chance, sit down with your students, start mapping out what your four year plan will look like at QO. So what kind of classes should I be taking now? What kind of classes should I should I wait to hold up taking next year? Um, there are some program completer options and some um, pathway um, options out there towards the second page of the of that packet that we handed out to students. So again, we strongly encourage all of our students that you know, in addition to taking your language, you may want to try out an engineering course, or you may want to try out a, a video production course, or courses in our child development program. Courses in if you like art, we have a lot of art options for students. So definitely, if you have a, if you have a chance, um, start mapping out your four year plans, and then we also give students, you know, for students who need SSL hours or they want to uh, um, rack up on more SSL hours, um, we're giving students five SSL hours for completing, completing their four-year plan and also uploading into Naviance. So once a student is um, has completed their four-year plan, they can come and talk to the counselors and we can get them on Naviance. And we'll also have a, a session about how to put your four-year plan in Naviance um, towards February. But for now, um, we're strongly encouraging all of our students to start looking at that four-year plan. All right, so uh, on Thursday, this Thursday, we are going to have our AP and electives fair. It will be in the main lobby and we'll be hosting um, this <clears throat> an annual event. And each year, I am just fascinated to see what our teachers do to just really talk about their programs and all the opportunities that our students have. So please encourage your student, your child, uh, to come out and learn about the AP courses and elective classes that we offer. Uh, as you know, as you saw earlier, there are classes that are required, and then there are classes that help to uh, enhance the educational experience here at Quince Orchard. So we really try to hear from our students and create courses that are um, intriguing and exciting for our students. So you can also learn more about the AP and elective presentation um, and the URL, I know, I think I just saw Ms. Lee uh, posted it uh, in the chat for you all to see. Um, for those of you who may not have realized, and hopefully you have, that last Thursday, uh, all our students received their registration information. Going back to what Mr. Rivera was just sharing, the four-year plan, um, was a document that we shared with students as well as the process that our students will go through. Um, key dates are on that so that you have an opportunity to discuss this with students. I will, will tell you that our current 10th graders are going to be our priority in terms of registration. And we know that, um, and we decided that they are a priority we, because of the recent implementation of the uh, health credit. So Please, if you've not taken a moment to speak with your student, please do so because we begin registration this week for students. 
Um, the there is a Google form that will be linked. Well, is linked to this presentation. You will receive it at the end. And it's important that um, students have an opportunity not only to go through and talk with you, but talk with their current teachers. They can talk with their teachers about where they see them um, going next year, and that they can indicate on the registrate on the Google registration form uh, alternative elective choices in order of preference. So we will do our best to help uh, ensure that our students get a few of the choices that they uh, select. But as you know, everything is pending um, enrollment and staffing allocations. So again, please, 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 we highly encourage you to have a conversation with your student now so that way we, we are best prepared and they're best prepared to um, begin the registration. So everything will happen online. Uh, students will uh, can go in now on their MCPS login and take a look at the different classes and then they'll sit with their counselors and review that. So when they meet with their counselors, when they bring in their four-year plan, that's really going to help them to have the conversation and ensure that they are on track because then their teachers will also, I'm sorry, their counselors will cross-check their um, the courses that they need for graduation. Again, I cannot, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> stress enough uh, the importance of talking with your child as they uh, begin to choose their classes. Thank you. All right, so some one of the questions that came up is um, about the elective fair. The elective fair will be during lunch. Um, on Wednesday. Um, we will be meeting with students. So we will have our 10th graders again starting this Thursday. Uh, they will be coming down to the counseling office through their social studies classes. So the social studies teachers um, have been given sort of their uh, what, the, what their schedule looks like for the week. Um, and we'll be meeting with each individual student um, through their social studies classes on Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and then all of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. And if any students miss out on our registration, period during this time around um, we will meet with them again um, you know in, in January of our students um, on this page you'll see the Google form so we have um, created a Google form for um, all of our students in there so when you click on when you go to this slide you can click on each of the links um, and that should get you there All right. Um, so for the online registration portion, so we so we kind of ask students to do both the Google form registration um, as well as the online registration. Um, through the online registration, students will log into Student View. So they'll once they get to their Student View account, they'll just you know enter their six or eight digit student ID number and then log in. And then afterwards, um, over on the left hand side, you'll have a couple of options. Students will click on Course Request. And then through course requests, once you click on it, um, you'll see a couple of, of, of information on there. And the top portion, you'll see um, sort of what classes students have been recommended for by their teachers. And then towards the bottom where it says graduation status uh, summary, um, there you can see what uh, sort of what our students missing uh, for the graduation required courses. Don't be alarmed. Sometimes when you look at this, some, um, some, some families have noticed things that a student has taken a tech class and it hasn't counted towards a tech credit or they've taken an art class and it doesn't show up on here as well. If, if anything, if any of that comes up, uh, please reach out to your counselors. I mean, we can give you a, sort of the, the actual, um, you know, what, where the students are at for graduation. And again, when we are registering uh, your students for the classes for the upcoming school year, we always keep that in mind as well to make sure that students are sitting, for, sitting in in classes that count towards graduation and encouraging students to knock out those uh, graduation required courses early on. Um, and again, uh, again, the, the recommendations or the suggestions will be shown on here, um, just like how you see on this page. Um, you'll see sort of the classes the student has been um, recommended or suggested to take for the upcoming school year. Um, but at the end of the day, even though the recommendations are on there, um, students, you know, families, you guys have the final say as to what classes they can take. Uh, if you have any questions about moving up or down on a particular level, if you want to try something else out, uh, please do talk to your teachers um, about their course suggestions. Um, and also your counselors. Again, we can help you out with, you know, what that class would look like 
Um, and I think Ms. Lee will talk about this later on, but in that packet that we sent out to all the students with the four-year plan, sort of towards the um, last, I think the last two pages on there, um, it gives you sort of a, a scenario of how, like how many hours does each particular AP class require or demand of students? So please keep that in mind when you're signing up for courses. Um, you know, just signing up for a couple of APs, it does take, it, there is a lot of outside of, uh, of class, uh, things that you have to do to prepare for that class. Once a student is ready to um, start accepting the recommendations um, or suggestions that we have listed on there, um, the student then goes off to the side and then they'll click on that add request button. When you're clicking on it, um, we have asked teachers to make sure that they're putting in recommendations or suggestions for the both the A and the B semester. Um, but if you don't see the B semester or the second semester um, course on there, just search it up and we'll show you how to do that in a minute. But make sure that you're signing up for both the A session and the B session. So if you're signing up for Algebra 2A, make sure that you're clicking on Algebra 2B. Same thing goes for your English and your um, social studies and every class that you, that you signed up for. Um, occasionally, when students are going on this page, they will see towards the bottom of the page, they'll see a blank, like there's nothing there, there's no way to, there's no classes or anything um, listed down there. And that's because there's this autofill feature that for some reason, I don't know why it still happened, but it happened when I helped a student out um, earlier this week. There's this autofill feature that's always, um, that fills in that course uh, duration slot. All you gotta do is just go into that slot and delete everything that's in there. Um, typically it's a student's ID number. I don't know why it comes up that way, but it pops up once you click the, once you delete the ID number, then you'll start seeing more, um, more options. But in this search course option, all you gotta do is under that course title, if you, know the, if you know the course ID number, you can type in the course ID number or under course title, you can just type in the name of the class that you're interested in. So for instance, I think we have an example on the next slide, Ms. Lee. Perfect. So if you type in psychology um, at QL, we only offer AP psychology. So if a student starts typing in psych, the um, class AP psychology will show up. So in this case, if a student wants to take AP psychology, um, they can select, um, click on that plus button off on the left hand side. Again, select A and B. Um, and then those classes will get added to a student's uh, course request for the upcoming school year. Um, I think from what we've been told, they have taken away this, um, because in the past, it used to be that when a student typed in psychology in that box, um, students, you know, well, all of us, you know, we type, in, we type in a word and we, we instinctively press enter to say that, hey, this is the course that I want. And in the past, um, when you hit enter, it automatically locked your account. And I don't know why that happened. Um, we've been told that that feature has been um, disabled, so that it shouldn't be an issue that if you hit enter by mistake, your um, your course request won't get locked in. But if you do get locked out, please send an email out to your counselors. We can help uh, unlock your account. But again, that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so I'm going to go over recommendations. I know there was a question in the Q&A about recommendations. Um, so some teachers may uh, complete the recommendation for students. Again, uh, for English, you know, honors 9A, all of those students will move on to English 10A. So again, for some departments, there is no need to complete recommendations. And in some departments, there will be recommendations. Please understand that this is a suggestion by the teacher. If you have a conversation with your child and you feel like your child will be successful in a certain class, please make sure that you register for that class. If you have questions, always reach out to your counselor and the counselor can you know help answer or navigate what class is best for your child. The slide is going over the registration dates. Uh, as Ms. Thomas mentioned earlier, our 10th grade is the first grade that's getting registered and this is going to take place through their social studies classes and that's going to begin on the 15th this week and then it'll go all the way up until next week for the 21st and all students will be meeting with their counselors and registering for classes for the next school year. Then when we return from winter break, we'll have our current 11th graders and they will be registering for their senior classes for again next year from January 6th to the 12th. And then January 13th to the 20th, that's gonna be again the time that your ninth graders are gonna be leaving their ninth, uh, social studies classes and meeting with their counselors to register for classes for next year. All of their students are recommended to complete again that Google form that Mr. Rivera mentioned and these slides are available to you at the end of today's presentation, so you'll have access to those Google Forms and you'll be able to choose all the different classes that you need to. Please make sure that you're reviewing the slides and reviewing all the different classes before you complete that Google Form. So a little bit of information about the scheduling and what that's going to look like for the upcoming school year once 
all of the students go to register for their courses. All of that information goes into our Synergy database. And in February, we collect all of those course requests. And then we utilize that to create our schedule for next school year. So in March and April, we are building that master schedule for the upcoming school year. And then sometime in June, we hope to get a letter home to all of our students. And it's normally available also on Synergy. So you can see the classes that you requested. Then in the summer, all of the schedules are finalized and you will or your students will have access to their schedules. And if there are any conflicts, we try to resolve all of those in August and make sure that when they return to school that they are ready to go. So this slide really asks that you consider what your child wants to do once you graduate from high school and think about all the different courses that you need to take to get you onto that path. We also encourage all of our students to take challenging courses challenging courses and take rigorous courses. So please make sure that you are uh, balancing some strong classes as well as interest outside of the classroom. So if we look at the next slide, it also talks about all the different um, extracurricular activities. And if you, uh, if you haven't noticed, our school offers, I think almost 100 different clubs and activities that students can get involved in. So a little bit of information about extracurricular you need to have eligibility, which means that you need to have an unweighted GPA of 2.0, and you can have no more than one E on your report card. Uh, we really encourage all of our students to get involved in the extracurricular activity. If the student wants to play a sport, they also need to make sure they have a physical form that's filled out from their doctor to try out for any sports team. If you don't like sports, there are all these other extracurricular activities that are available to you. I know that Mr. Rivera mentioned the four-year plan. And you click on that um, on the presentation later, you're going to be able to scroll and see all the hours that you're going to need for an AP class. We have a lot of students who think that they want to take four or five AP classes. But when you go through um, that four year plan at the very bottom, it'll tell you how many hours each AP class requires. And if you think about the number of hours that an extracurricular is also going to require, you're going to be able to see, OK, I'm not going to be able to do all of it. You'll have to have a conversation and determine what's going to suit your child best. So please, we encourage all of our parents and caregivers to have those conversations with their children to identify which classes, which clubs, which extracurriculars they'd like to complete in their four years at Quince Orchard. Ms. Adams. All right, so next up, um, well, before I do that, just also the slides from tonight, the video from tonight, the FAQ will all be posted on the website. And a lot of the things that we've already talked about and the students that have already gotten the slides from their presentation in homeroom, links to the Google Forms, a link to Student View, all of that is also already on the QO homepage, just qhs.org. It's right there at the top of the uh, page for registration because it's such an important time for all of our students. So I am gonna go through um, the Advanced Studies and um, AP Signature Program. Uh, next slide. Um, you, uh, okay. I just, yes, just stay on that either in the next slides. Yeah. So that link will take you just to kind of these eight signature, um, slides themselves. Um, you'll see there's a link there at the top to the signature booklet that has a little bit more detail about each of the courses, as well as we have created a new, um, fine arts and career technology education page, a website that has information directly from our teachers email links to all of the teachers within these programs, as well as sample artwork and sample information and quotes from students that really kind of details a lot of these electives and uh, the information you can find out about them. So if you're looking for more detail, but I'm gonna go through each of these. So you can see how you can earn um, a signature certificate in each of these different areas. So next slide. The first up is just a signature certificate in advanced academics. So this is um, in recognition of students who take at least one college level course, so one AP course, and uh, complete each semester of that course with at least a B. Um, and they maintain an overall GPA for their four years in high school of a C or better. So that they have taken, they have taken one of our upper level advanced AP courses, they'll get a signature certificate in advanced academics. Next slide. Uh, the next step up from that is the Distinguished Scholar Certificate. And I do wanna highlight what's bolded there um, that says B or higher for each semester in each of these courses. That is a change for the 2023-2024 school year and beyond. So if you have a student who has not taken an AP class yet, 
Um, these requirements would be for all of their AP classes. If you have a student who has taken, is a junior going to be a senior, um, the old requirement was a C or higher for each semester. Um, we are um, advancing that a little bit uh, to really make this a distinguished scholar program. Um, so to complete that, you need to take APNSL as a sophomore and complete each semester with a semester grade of B or higher. Two additional AP courses in 11th grade, one has to be English or math, um, and again, complete with at least a B or higher. And then their senior year, take two more additional AP classes in any subject area um, that they wish and complete those with a B or higher. And we encourage all students to take the AP exams. Um, and when they're doing that, to research the colleges and universities that accept credit for those exams and those exam scores. Next slide. The last two were just kind of generic advanced AP requirements. Um, the next set are all more specific in a focused area. Um, the first one, I'm gonna answer the question real quick. Was the requirement to take a minimum number of AP exams eliminated for distinguished scholars? Yes, we're no longer requiring that you take the exam, but we upped the grade minimum. So you had, it used to be you had to have at least a C average, um, each sem a C for each semester and take the exam. Um, we have decided to get rid of the exam requirement, but change the grade to a B so that you're engaged in classes, you're trying hard, you're really showing that content. We know that taking AP exams can be challenging at times um, and expensive at times. So we're looking at making sure that you're just an engaged, active student in the classroom. So the first signature program in advanced art is visual art, and we have three in advanced arts. So you can see that we have four different pathways. We have a digital art pathway, a studio art, which is kind of your traditional drawing and design and painting, pathway, we have a photography pathway and a ceramics pathway. And each of those has courses that you can take in sequence that lead to AP studio art, either 2D drawing or 3D. And to, to complete the visual arts pathway, you need to take three art courses. So you can take photo one, photo two, photo three, and then take AP art history, and then take AP studio art. So the completion of those five courses with and with a B or higher in all semester of all of those courses earns you a certificate in advanced art. For the digital art pathway, you could take digital art one, advanced digital art, and then like photography one, since there's only two classes in that sequence. You must take at least one advanced course. So you couldn't take digital art one, photography one, and ceramics one, because those courses are not gonna get you to an advanced enough level to do well um, in the AP studio art. You have to have at least two years of the same in the same subject area to take AP studio, AP 2D or AP drawing. Next slide. Uh, the next is in our music pathway. Um, and you can see there are a lot of options in our music pathway and all of these music classes, as well as all of the classes on the art uh, slide before this, um, qualify for the art credit. Uh, towards graduation. So you can, again, take four performance courses. So some of these courses like show choir, chamber choir, symphonic band, wind ensemble, um, symphonic orchestra, you can take twice, not just a one-time course. So you need to complete four years of performance courses with a beer higher, or four years of general music. So you could take four years of guitar, or four years of piano, or a combination of those. You might take two years of piano and two years of guitar. And then that culminates with taking AP music theory, either your junior or senior year, again, with a B or higher. And we do encourage you to take the AP exam. One note that music technology does not count towards the uh, AP signature pathway in music. Next slide. We also offer in our advance, in our arts track, a theater, two different theater tracks. So you can, you would pick one of the programs to focus on. Uh, both start with theater one. One is more focused on the acting um, and directing side. And one is more on the kind of back end side, the stage design, digital art, music technology side. And you can see that each of those land, um, finishes with an AP course, either AP literature or music theory, if you're on more of the um, performance side, 
or AP 2D Studio Art if you are on the design stage side. Next slide. We have two pathways in our advanced arts and computer science. Uh, one is the programming pathway um, that starts with foundations of computer science. And you'll note that it says at QOHS. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Um, and then it progresses through AP Computer Science Principles, Programming One, AP Java, and then an information technology internship. Or you can do the Cisco pathway, which has three um, Cisco certified courses, cybersecurity essentials, intro to networks, switching and routing, the internship, and then they take AP computer science principles at some point during those four years. The, I wanna make a very important distinction here. If you take foundations of computer science in middle school um, to be consistent with all of the pathways at Quince Orchard, where we require that you take five courses at Quince Orchard, um, the foundations of computer science counts for your tech credit for graduation, but it doesn't count as part of the pathway for your signature program. So students who take foundations in middle school would need to complete a fifth course within at QO to count to finish out that um, signature cord. And what we highly recommend is that students take either digital art or music technology because both of those satisfy the art graduation requirement and they are so computer heavy. You're learning how to make digital music or you're learning how to make digital art and can be tied very closely into computer science and computer app design. Or you could take a Cisco course or introduction to um, interactive media course, uh, the, it's the start of our gaming pathway as well. Next slide. <clears throat> we do also have two pathways in media and communications. One, they both start with the same introductory course, introduction to interactive media. Um, and then after that course, students kind of pick a pathway if they wanna go down the game development and advanced game development side, or if they're more into video production, which um, involves them with QOTV and a lot of our um, video production. So both of those ending with um, a uh, AP course at the end. Next slide. This one is our education certi certificate and they're this will get you the cord for graduation. There is also a way to earn college, um, I'm sorry, not college, certification credit to be to exit the program um, with child of, a child development associates certification. But there are three courses that you take at Quince Orchard. Um, two of them are in the classroom with our Cougar Cubs. And then the other two, one is a portfolio and part internship. And then the other is either to complete an internship at an early childhood center or do dual enrollment at Montgomery College. And then students in completing that pathway are also required to take AP Psychology um, because it aligns with you know, teaching little kids and learning at little kids and knowing the psychology behind that. And that is our AP our education pathway. Next slide. The next one is our project lead the way or our engineering pathway. This you'll notice does not have any AP courses. Project Lead the Way is a little bit different and you can actually leave this pathway earning nine credits from Rochester Institute of Technology. We actually get a transcript from RIT um, for completion of those courses. Um, they are not recognized by College Board for AP, but they all of these courses from IED all the way down to engineering design and development are college level courses. Uh, again, we do have one middle school that's offering introduction to engineering design. So if a student takes IED in the middle school, then at QO, they would need to take five courses. So you can see that students take IED usually as a freshman, principles of engineering as a sophomore, digital electronics as a junior, and then either double up their junior year and take environmental sustainability or aerospace, or double up their senior year and take one of those electives with engineering design and development. So all students must take um, engineering design and development. And if a student took IED in middle school, then they would take both environmental sustainability and aerospace at QO. And students can earn college credit in the first three courses by maintaining an 85% average over the four quarters. Or your, their marking period scores actually get sent to RIT and earning um, scoring well on the end of course assessment. You do not have to pay to until you know if you are going to get credit. So this, every student takes the end of course assessment. It's done during class time. Um, and then the scores are reported 
to RIT and then students that wish to can then apply to RIT to earn that credit. Next slide. And then we have a signature program in certificate in social science, social studies. So students must take AP NSL and AP world history um, and complete those with a grade of a B or higher and then complete two additional AP courses. You can say AP US, AP Comparative, AP Euro, Human Geography, Micro, Macro, and AP Psychology are those are there options there. So complete any two of those with a B or higher and then complete Quest, um, which is our capstone course in social studies um, and complete with a B or higher, including submitting their final project. So fitting all of that in, figuring all of that out, like we've said, is very important um, to kind of have a plan going into it and really discussing um, where students see themselves after high school and kind of using this time to explore those different pathways, get a greater understanding of some of the content that's in there and the application of it, especially in some of our advanced courses. If you have any questions about that long-term planning or questions about any of those programs, please feel free to contact me um, and I'm happy to kind of sit down and walk through those with you or, or advise you as I can on how to kind of fit the different pieces in. Next slide. So just a reminder, um, again, our AP electives fair is on December 15th. Uh, it'll be all throughout the whole, it'll be through during lunch and it'll be out throughout the whole entire um, lobby. So all of our courses, um, electives, everything that we have available, um, teachers will be out there, students will be out there um, talking about the programs, talking about the, what their classes look like. So please encourage your students to, to come out and just you know check out if there's a class that they're interested in, just to mark it off somewhere um, and then just go to that table so they can learn more about that particular program. Um, and then just you know put, put that course in their, in their course registration in Google, and then we can help get that in there. Um, in the registration in Synergy or in Student View. And again, the, the tiny URL here that you see here, if you follow that link, um, that'll also give you access to all of the courses that we offer here um, at QO. Um, also on there, we again, we, we put in course descriptions. I think one of the questions that was asked is, where do we find out about prereqs and what, what class do I need to take before I take that particular class? Um, that we have all of these courses listed also on our counseling website. Um, if you go under academic support and click on registration and course options, you'll see all the course that we have to offer. Next slide. All right. And then again, if you have any, any particular questions about content area or subjects, um, here's, the, here's the email of all of our um, RTs. So when you get this, you can click on the, um, any, of the, any of those links and send an email out to the, any of those RTs. And then again, if you have any questions, again, check, uh, check our, our counseling um, website. We have a lot of, a lot, we will we'll post all of this links on our counseling website along with the main website as well. Um, and anything that you need, it's all available on the counseling website. Additionally, if you guys are on Twitter, follow us on Twitter. Um, we try to post up any updates, anything that's going on um, on there as well. Okay, so we're just thanking you for joining us tonight. And we added links for all the different slideshows in the chat. So if you were unable to access that chat, all of these slides will be shared on our school website tomorrow. You'll have access to all the slides. And when you click on the different images, it'll lead you directly into the links for the AP and electives fair. You'll have a link for the counseling website. You'll have a link for the electives website. And again, all of this information will all be available to you tomorrow on our school website. We thank you for joining us tonight. This recording of this meeting is also going to be available on tomorrow's uh, website uh, update. And Ms. Adams is going to update everything for everyone. Our administrative team thanks you. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your counselor or your grade level administrator. We are always happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Thank you. And again, if you had any questions that you we're answered tonight. Just reach out to your counselor or your grade level administrator. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, I'm going to log off everyone. Good night, everyone. <laughs>